Hello, everybody. We're so excited. Welcome back to Life on Purpose Live. We're with Paul Oval all the way from California. So it's, uh, what, 12 o'clock there? Uh, one o'clock. One o'clock, yes. Uh, one o'clock. And you've got the beautiful beach behind you. But Paul is the founder of Faith Unveiled Network. Um, but boy, he's got a lot of story to get to to get to how he got to that. So we're going to we're going to share what he's doing, the exciting way that he's doing it. Um, but the Lord's been at work preparing him for this very day and for what he's doing now for a very long time, because you have a very early Holy Spirit salvation story. How did God grip your heart so early in your life? Uh, my dad was a pastor for 61 years in San Antonio, Texas. That's where I grew up at. Uh, and uh, at the age of nine, I remember running to the altar uh, and falling on my knees and, and right then and there, God filled me with the Holy Spirit and uh, stayed at the altar for about a half hour. And uh, at that time, I heard a voice, of course, nine years old, whatever that meant. But I heard a voice saying that you're going to preach and that you're going to lay your hands on people and they're going to be healed. Wow. So at the same at the same time, God was speaking to my dad, the same very, the, the very the exact same thing. So when I got up from the altar, uh, and, and back then uh, it was a Pentecostal church. So back then we had the old wooden altar, literally a wooden altar. Mm -hmm. And as I got up from there, my dad called me and said, son, what did God tell you? And I said, I don't know. He said, no, you heard something. What did you hear? And I said, well, I heard that God said that I'm supposed to be preaching someday and I'm going to be able to lay my hands on people and they're going to be healed. He goes, exactly. That's exactly what God spoke to me, that God's given you the gift of miracles, the gift of healing. And that you're going to be a mighty warrior uh, in the kingdom of God preaching his gospel. So that's how that started. Well, so how did you make it through those those years where generally we begin to struggle with who we are? Because a lot of us are saved early, but then we turn 16 or we turn 20 and we, we veer off. Did you veer off or were you so certain of your call that you were able to remain on that one road? Uh, God never gave me a chance or I never had a chance to veer off. Uh, in saying that, I started, I did my first sermonette at age 13. Uh, and by fit, uh, by the age of 15, I was actually being invited to other churches to come minister. Wow. So you definitely had the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And uh, I saw my first miracle uh, at age nine. I saw my first miracle. I laid my hands on a dying dog and God brought it back to life immediately. Wow. Uh, and then at 18, uh, the gift of miracles was really activated in my ministry. I was evangelizing at the age of 18, uh, right out of high school, actually kind of during high school and out of high school. And the gift of miracles just really exploded in my ministry that uh, God did. So I, I never veered off away from that teenage years. I was always my teenage years was in my room studying the Bible. That's amazing. And I guess when you've had that encounter with God so stark and so evident, it, it makes it harder to walk away because he's done a, like a, a permanent eternal work in you. Well, let's you, let's talk about healing and prophecy, because those are the gifts that you have discussed. Um, and we're in a, a nation right now. It's in crisis, the pandemic. Uh, what do you say to people about um healing and you know how, how do we feel you know people are struggling with what is this i mean i know people who have died from this and i think people there's a legitimate i don't know question of what's god up to and how is this how is this going to play out i mean I, I know you don't necessarily have the answers but what would you say to that all right it comes in phases i think uh you know miracles are always around but a vast majority of miracles, I think, comes in phases. Back in the in the 80s, stuff like that, we saw miracles all over the place. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we had the A.A. A. Allens and, the, and all those uh, miracle workers. Uh, and God has been speaking to the church that those miracles are coming back, and we've seen nothing yet of what we've seen in the past. Uh, miracles are still happening. I just recently prayed for a man in the hospital that was in the hospital for a uh, heart transplant. And uh, I was called to go pre uh, pray for him, and I prayed for him. Two days later, he was dismissed from the hospital with the healthiest heart that he's ever had since he was a teenager. Wow. So God restored his heart. Uh, so, uh, and, and, and also in my past, uh, not too long ago, uh, I got actually kicked out of a church because I laid my hands on somebody and a miracle happened. <laughs> and the pastor didn't believe in miracles. Oh. So, uh, 
we just believe, you know, it's, it's, it's all about belief and trusting in God. And so, yes, miracles can definitely happen today, just as a, it's, it's a belief system. We got to believe. They'll happen. And, and we're going to see stories coming out. I post them a lot about people that have had an encounter with God where they have been healed from the virus or other things. And they know that they had a moment with God and they know they've been healed. Um, and so those healings, I mean, the main thing to do is get the word out there that those are happening so other people can see that and therefore believe it. The faith has to be stirred up in the body. It has yeah. to be. There has to be some uh, tangible evidence that has to occur for people to say that's undeniable. Right. And when that begins to happen, it's going to spread like fire throughout the church that miracles are happening. And then when the church is on fire, then it leaks into the secular world. Right. Right. Well, how did you get into the business world? Because I noticed that you have a, a long uh, history in construction and things like that, which I think is great because I think people in ministry do better when you've got that uh, business background. How did that help your foundation as you began to go back into ministry later? Uh, I give a lot of credit to my dad uh, and the negative things that happened to my dad. Uh, he, he's, he's gone now, but he worked for the same company for 41 years. And he uh, lifted a desk and hurt his back and damaged himself. Mm. And so he had to go on a medical retirement um, in his, uh, I forget what, what age it was, but he had to go on a medical retirement. And in that medical retirement, he got fired. Oh. Uh, he was very close to actual retirement, but they fired him because they didn't want to pay him. Mm. So I made a, a statement to myself right then and there. I will never, ever be subject to the corporate world to be fired. So I was in construction. So with that, I just began, I just started my own company. I just started doing uh, side work is what we call it, side jobs. And I started there and it grew from there. People like my work and people like what I did. And it just began from there and to the point where, okay, uh, my, my side income is now more than my regular weekly income. So I walked away from it and started my own company. And uh, that's when I became an entrepreneur and just moved in from there. I've had three careers in my in my life. Uh, and so uh, that's that's what kept me. And so that keeps me going is mm -hmm. I don't want to work for the corporate world. I don't want to end up someday going, hey, you're fired because we don't need you anymore. So that's my drive. That's my push. Well, and uh, with the entrepreneurial spirit, which it helps so much, I think it you know, uh, I had a business background as well. And I think it helps so much for ministries to understand the business aspect because your ministry is not going to be very strong or, or have a whole lot of vitality if you don't have a strong business. Do you agree with that? Regardless I, of your faith, I, you have to have absolutely. a strong business plan. Absolutely. I agree 100%. Uh, and in and, and saying that, uh, we don't have all the answers. So the best thing to do and is what I did in the areas that I'm weak at in business, I pull advice in. Mm -hmm. I grab a friend and says, hey, you're great at this. I need some help. So uh, it's, it's not a lonely road uh, because we need other people. Right. I can't do uh, everything there is to be done, but I, I'm a good networker. Mm -hmm. And so I pull in people that can do what I lack. And so how did all of this lead to your digital um, I mean, because you're a digital genius just based on what you've done. So how did you get a hold of that part of the world? And I mean, a lot of people don't understand that world. I mean, we know it, we see it, we watch it, but you're, you know, it, see it, watch it and, and produce it. So how right. did you understand that this was the trend coming long enough ago that you were ready for that? Uh, trial and error. <laughs> Uh, I grew up as a graphic designer. Uh, my, my dad always called it a God-given gift where I can see anything and draw it. Uh, and I have, that, I have that gift of, of design and drawing and stuff like that. Colors come natural to me. Uh, color palettes come natural to me. It's just something that just God gave me. And so I took my artwork in the mid 80s and took it over to a computer. And so I bought one of those little Tandy Radio Shack computers it had 20 megs uh, uh, hard drive and I crashed it. I crashed it so many times uh, trying to learn it. Uh, I, I, I never took any classes. It was just all trial and error. And so I began to learn how a computer works. And when I realized or recognized how a computer works, it was easy to figure out programs. And so that just evolved from there. I just uh, took a lot of the graphic. I bought some graphic design programs when they first came out mm -hmm. and just started playing with those and manipulating those and became a graphic, a computer graphic designer. 
which revolutionized the world. Yeah. Uh, and then from there, I just went into uh, websites and designing that, playing with that till it came to now to a point where 24 years ago, I started my first uh, website graphic design and printing company. So I've been doing it for 20 something years. Well, you said something in a sentence a, a, a little bit back about God gave you that and God, this was a gift God gave you. So people struggle with that. You say it like you understand it and you know what God gave you a gift to do. And this is a struggle for a lot of people because we all have an individual purpose and we're gifted to live out that purpose. Right. What do you say to someone who is not sure how to walk into that confidence and step out in that leap of faith? Uh, I do a lot of mentoring and a lot of counseling. And the first thing I tell somebody like that is what do you love? Yes. Everyone has a, has something that they really love to do. Uh, and, and then start playing with that. Start working on that and start developing that love. Don't worry about the money right mm -hmm. now. The money will eventually come. Mm -hmm. But if you begin to take that desire of your heart, because the scripture says that God gives us the desires of our hearts. And I think that has a double meaning. God put that desire there in the first place. And then God will give us that desire mm -hmm. as we work it. And as we uh, begin to develop it, God will work with what we love to do. And then sometimes uh, God brings a gift out of tragedy. Sometimes we go through yeah. some horrific times in life and God will take that and develop that uh, mm -hmm. towards our gift. So there's always something in every person's life. There's that spark of God that's in there, either something that you love to do or something that you went through that somebody else needs help with. And as yeah. you begin to develop that, it, mm -hmm. it works into a ministry. And sometimes your passion is derived out of your compassion, which is something you've been through. And I heard somebody once say, you can't teach what you haven't walked, but if you've walked it, you can walk someone else through it. Absolutely. That's, that's very good. What about, uh, so on the purpose topic, what about, um, um, patience? <laughs> I lost my word. What about patience? Because I see a lot of people that I think, and I've done it myself, so I can say this. You can't push purpose. You can't accelerate it. You can't get ahead of God. What is God doing in our hearts as he prepares us for that life of purpose? Uh, you know, it's about focus. Uh, as long as the only time that, it, that you fail is when you give up. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, it takes it takes sometimes years, depending on our stubbornness and where we're at with God. But uh, as we begin to allow God to move in our life, he will direct us. I, I, I tell people uh, this story when it comes to living for God and doing what God wants you to do and finding your purpose. Uh, walking for God is like driving a car at night with a navigator. You can only see 150 feet in front of you. Mm -hmm. You That's trust true. what you can see in front of you. You have a vision, you have a goal in mind. You know that the navigator is going to get you there. God is that navigator. You don't know what the corner, what's going to be around the corner until you get there. Yes. So if we focus on what's in front of us with what we can see and take that first step towards it, God will always make sure that as your car drives forward, metaphorically, those headlights will be there and you'll be able to see the next step. And then once you get to the third step, you'll be able to see the fourth step. And that's how I say walk towards your dreams and walk towards your, your ministry is just pretend you're driving a car at night. You don't need to worry about what's a mile in front of you. Right. Uh, that's a, it's not our job to worry about the hows. Mm -hmm. It's just our job to worry about the destination and, and not even worry about it, but just keep it to keep it focused in our head, the destination. And as we move forward, uh, just like with the network, when I started the network, I didn't know anything about setting up a studio, a TV studio. But as I took the, the first step and obedience was the key, God placed that person that I needed right in front of me. God placed that camera that I needed right in front of me. God began to put things in place as I became obedient to the call that God gave me. I think that's very well said because I think so often we want to be able to see five years down the road. Absolutely. Then, I mean, even if you, even if you have such a great plan, and you, you've got it all mapped out to five years down the road, it's not going to end up what you thought. Right. It, it, and the scripture says uh, we can develop the plan, but it's God who gives the increase. Yes. It's God. So let's talk about Faith Unveiled Network. God woke you up one morning at five o'clock and he said, get to your computer 
And how did that uh, accelerate where we're now at this great network seen in 133 million homes and you're just, you're just doing really great things. Explain that uh, process. Yeah, uh, years ago, a, a little quick story of how it developed. About seven years ago, God gave me a vision that he was gonna raise up a new army uh, for his kingdom. And this new army was uh, gonna fight for his kingdom with uncompromised truth. And so God said, uh, uh, I'm going to call and I'm going to raise up the hidden and the unknown people in my kingdom. It's going to be the alcoholic that I'm going to deliver. It's going to be the drug addict that I'm going to deliver and give gifts to. It's going to be the guy sitting next to you in a pew. It's not going to be the big TV evangelists that are out there. And so uh, that's what God spoke to me, that he's getting ready to do it. A little over four years ago, God spoke to me and said, hey, remember that army that I told you about? He said, I'm raising them. He said, he said, create an avenue of exposure for these people. And so the idea came along over about a period of a month, me praying stuff that and, and people walked into my life and said, hey, have you ever started thinking about started a, a TV network? And I'm like, no, no, that's not no anywhere I want to go right now. And so after the third confirmation, I said, OK, God, what do you want me to do? And so one day at the. Uh, uh, shorten the story quite a bit because I'm a talker and I need to get this over with. <laughs> uh, one day at five o'clock in the morning, God woke me up out of a dead sleep and said, get to your computer. I'm going to download some ideas to you. So literally I got up, went to my desk, oh, turned on my computer, got it going. And then six hours later, without ever getting up from my seat, the network was born. The website was done. I had it on the internet live and it started from there. But now that we've heard your story, God was preparing you all those years by giving you the knowledge to be able to get up and do that. It's funny that you say that because what God kept, because I, when, when I heard TV network, I'm like, how God, how I, I, I just, no, I don't. And, and God kept saying, use what you have, use what you have. And I heard over and over and over again, even men and people came into my life saying, use what you have. And I heard that phrase so many times. And so uh, God spoke to me again and said, here's a clue. I'm going to send my I'm going to send a wave of my spirit through the Internet. And my wife was praying about it. We we're both praying about it. And my wife says, hey, I think I know what God me God wants an online TV network. And just the light went off in my head and I went, oh, my gosh, there, that's what it is. Yeah. So with that uh and and with tv going to the uh, internet and everything going to the internet that was a definite sign from god saying this is what i want you to do get that online tv network going so i did and long story short uh, god has taken it beyond my capability mm -hmm. of growth so you're in how many countries we're in over 120 countries right now That's amazing so yeah. I mean, you're you're going you've Global is, you know, you're, you're, you're way past just international. I mean, you're just global, right? This right. is amazing. Right. How did you, how did that come about? Well, uh, because of my uh, internet background, website background, I specialize in search engine optimization. Ah. So, so within the first three months, I was in uh, 24 countries. Uh, and that, and then it just kept growing from there. And I would, place the keywords in the right place and stuff like that. And the next thing you know, I opened up my analytics and went, oh my gosh, I'm in, I, I'm in, I'm in 40, I'm in 60 countries. And they just kept growing and growing and growing. So wow. today over 120 and, and uh, it just keeps, it keeps growing. We just uh, closed a deal with uh, one of the largest, uh, one of uh, India's largest Christian TV uh, cable companies. And they are now downloading all our shows to play uh, in uh, India, throughout India and Sri Lanka, over into over 60 million homes. So are they are they translating? They are not translating. Uh, India, most of India speaks English. Really? Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, and and God just spoke to me just recently to create. Uh, we we just uh, about three months ago opened up a Faith Unveiled Women's TV Network. Mm -hmm. uh, and also, yeah, there you go. And we uh, right now we're developing a Faith Unveiled International, where we're going to have native tongue shows on the network. In America, every tongue is spoken. And then also, if we can reach out to those corners of the world and they hear their own language, 
then we've accomplished more about getting the kingdom of God and the word out. And, and you are doing the Faith Unveiled Network, the fun network, totally different because you're going not after the big, huge names. You're right. going after the hidden talents. You're, you're giving a platform to people who have been looking for a platform for years. Yes. It's uh, uh, the slogan of the network is real people, real issues, real answers. Yeah. Uh, it's a peer to peer thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I want I want somebody uh, on my level to tell me about God. I want peer to peer action going on. Mm -hmm. And if I can find an alcoholic that was delivered and mm -hmm. now has a gift that needs to be exposed, I'm putting him on the network. His, his show may not be top quality, but he's getting the message out. And right. if he can reach other people. Uh, people that are gang members and, and alcoholics and, and, and drug addicts, and that's who we want to reach. We're after the unsaved, not the saved. Uh, we are, we are not, we're not looking to be another TBN and God bless TBN and what they're doing, but that's not our platform. Mm -hmm. uh, 90, 90, 95% of TBN's uh, viewing audience are Christians. And, and so I'm putting shows on the network that the secular crowd will sit down in front of a TV and watch uh, with a good positive message. That's the goal. And what do you want people to do to come alongside you to help you? What can our audience do? And I, I mean, sign up. I mean, what, what do people do to sign up? Yeah, there, there's no sign up uh, uh, available at all. Just go on to one of our platforms and start watching. Uh, what the viewers can do is email, let the broadcasters know that they're watching. They can leave uh, uh, video comments because uh, we we let uh, we put all our shows on YouTube also, so everybody can share them. Uh, and then, of course, you know it always takes finances, but I don't want to go there because of what we're doing now. So during this pandemic, we're we're saying, what can we do for you? Mm -hmm. If you can watch us, if you can uh, uh, share the word, what can we do for you? Yeah. And so that's that's what our viewers can do is is let us know you're watching. That's very good. And then finally, um, you know, one of the things that I like to say is the way to change the world is is one story at a time. What do you say to people that think their story doesn't make a difference or their story doesn't matter? I mean, we're, our stories are equally powerful because Christ came in and interceded. So how do you tell people as a digital media expert and film and TV, how do you tell people to do that in such a way that they're prepared to get their message out where people can, can learn from it? My call is just as important as yours. Mm -hmm. Your call is just as important as mine. Yeah. There's plenty of room in the kingdom of God, no mm -hmm. matter what you were here and you were put on life for a purpose, whether it was a mistake, whether it was illegitimate, whatever reason mm -hmm. that you're on earth, it's, there's a reason behind it and there's a purpose behind it. Your purpose is important. You can reach people that I can never reach mm -hmm. and I can reach people that you'll never reach. And so we're all important. There's a body, whether you're the fingernail or the nail or the finger, mm -hmm. you're important to the body. So everybody's vision, everybody's dream is very important. There's plenty of room. There's plenty of things to go around. So just know that your desire as important as everyone else's and God will as as my favorite pastor used to say as your faith intersects with God's faithfulness all of a sudden boom right yeah I like to say when the natural kisses the supernatural there you go magnificent things happen and 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 getting to that supernatural is just taking one step at a time Exactly. And I think that's critical. Well, we could talk all day, but we won't, but we can come back and do this again. So that's the good news, but we're good very luck. excited about going so on the network and uh, I look forward to getting to work together and uh, I'm sure there's things we can do to uh, help get the word out for a lot of people. And I'm into that and you're into that. So we'll, we'll collide on that and um, help others achieve their dreams and it'll, it'll be great for the kingdom of God. I'm honored that you asked me on the show. Uh, thank you so much. And yes, together we will win. Thank you so much. It's good talking to you. And um, we will come back again and do this soon. And we're going to post this so people can watch and watch. Thank you. You've right. been great. I've enjoyed it so much. All right. God bless. And God bless everyone. You too. Bye, Paul. See you. Bye. -bye.